Pew, 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 pew. This is Martha with Light Diamond Creative. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad to share all of this amazing information that I've been learning over the course of the last four, four and a half years since October 2018. This information is free for the general upliftment of humanity. Welcome. <laughs> Apply and reject as needed. We have been talking about the nine chakra system, which is of Tibetan Buddhist origin through the lessons that have been taught to me by anointed Buddhist monk Vajra Darshan. And here we are today talking on the Hara, the Hara chakra, chakra number two. This is one of the last episodes we're going to spend in this area before moving up or maybe, maybe even taking a break. <laughs> If you haven't listened to the other episodes, I highly recommend it because the information on the root chakra is very important. And so is the science about the meditation, about any meditation, not just this one. Although this one seems, these meditations are very special. And I say that because of my personal experience and my personal energetic transformation that's taken place through practicing them. And I also speak from the experience of working people, working with people in meditation class and witnessing their releases of energy and their energetic transformations and how they feel better after class than they did before. So speaking from experience. And today we're talking about the Hara the visualization on the basic level at the hara, at the navel, first or lower half of the sacral chakra from the seven chakra practice, but here we are in the nine, so this is the hara at the navel. The visualization of this is so interesting to me. It continues to be more interesting as I gain information about the electromagnetic field. So that is what this episode is about, the Hara visualization and the electromagnetic field. The visualization for the Hara on the basic level in this nine chakra practice is visualizing the core of the body along the vertebrae, also known as the prana tube, also known as the central nervous system, including all of this physiology. The core of the being is an antenna in the visual of this practice. The core... The antenna we visualize as shooting out lightning, shooting out, sending out energy from the Hara space, and also receiving energy and lightning shooting into the body, into the Hara from the external. We visualize this flow of energy in and out. And along my personal practice, I began to explore the idea of this visual representing the exchange of information and energy to and from the body. And as we practice in this space through a meditation, we can become aware of our personal energetic behavior by the way we intuit the flow of energy in and out through these bolts of lightning. Sometimes we visualize that the Hara is shooting a lot of stuff out, shooting a lot of energy out into the external. And I would say that that is reflecting a vibrant internal space. If we're able to give a lot of energy out, then the internal space, this core, this antenna is functioning vibrantly on a physiological level, physical level, an emotional level, and a, a mental level, spiritual level, all the levels. If we're shooting out a lot of energy, then we've got energy to give. And the body seeks to be in homeostasis. It seeks to be in balance. And in order to give out energy, we need to receive. The reason a person is able to give out a lot of energy is because they're at a state of being capable to give. Or they are giving all of their energy away, we can ask ourselves, am I giving energy away without being reciprocated? 
this is a great exploration at the Hara practice as well. Because if it is the case where we are not in balance, then we can visualize opening up ourselves to receive energy in receiving energy into the Hara space so that we can become replenished enough to give again. Something that is really interesting about this space. So I'm just going to give you, I'm going to give you a little tidbit from the advanced lessons. Okay, so prepare yourselves. Are you seated? Are you sitting down? Have you listened to the information about the root chakra? Okay, so this advanced tidbit, the, the visualization develops and the visualization becomes an exchange of energy between two spheres. So the sphere at the hara and then an external sphere that encompasses and contains the body and energy moving from one sphere's membrane to the other sphere's membrane, lightning shooting in and out from each. And then what what's up with that is down the road in my personal practice I realize more and more about the electromagnetic field and this visualization specifically at the Hara more accurately represents the electromagnetic field than any other visualization with any other chakra that is interesting to me and what is the electromagnetic field, we can ask? Well, <laughs> knowing about it is part of the journey of self-mastery. If we know that we have energy that's not totally contained within the body, we can become more of a master of ourselves. If we realize that not all of our energy, not all of the spirit fits into the skin bag, then we can really start to play with that concept, realizing the reality of the electromagnetic field. People like Dr. Joe Dispenza, first of all, will change your life. If you tap into some of him, his information, Dr. Joe Dispenza has been able to measurably, measurably detect the differences in people's electromagnetic field before and after meditations. So not only is he capturing the reality of the electromagnetic field, aka the aura, he is demonstrating through his studies the reality of the aura, this energy outside the body. Not only is he doing that, but he is showing that practices such as meditation positively affect the energetic field around the body through the practice of meditating. And sometimes meditating with specific things, like he'll do a blessing of the energy centers, which is something that I've integrated into my nine chakra practice with myself or when I work with people, is blessing the chakras as we move up the spine to bring in energies and frequencies that are positive for the unfolding of our optimal reality. The electromagnetic field. We are electromagnetic on a cellular level, on a subatomic level even. You get that? Anything that has mass has electromagnetism. And we can look at mass on a number of different scales. So, for example, we can look at the electromagnetic fields of atoms. And the way that atoms, when they are going through an exchange of electrons with each other in the environment that they're in, this shows to create an electric current. And then we can look at the cellular level, electromagnetism on a cellular level. So this is really cool. This is from a different doctor. I didn't bring his book with me. I think his name is Dr. Lipton. In any case, uh, I, I give information about him on a different podcast, so you'll have to sift through all those, okay? So what I'm learning from him is that, and he's a cellular biologist, the membrane of cells, that that's the, the outer sphere part of the cell, okay? The membrane of the cell 
has proteins. They're called integral membrane proteins. And the shape of integral membrane proteins shifts depending on the electromagnetism, the charges of ions within the environment. Why would an integral membrane protein protein need to change conformation or change shape within the membrane of the cell? They need to do this because of the nature of the membrane, how it is both polar and nonpolar. Stick with me now. And so as they receive different charges, which change the conformation of the protein, different things are allowed into and out of the cell, such as nutrients coming in or waste products going out. And in order for those things to travel across the membrane, the protein, the proteins need to create a channel for them to travel through by changing their shape. An example of a charged molecule hormone would be estrogen. And so, for example, there are specific integral membrane proteins, receptors, that are within the membrane of a cell which magnetize the charged hormone that is estrogen. And keep in mind that all this is happening in the dark. These cells don't have eyes like we have on our face, okay? They are existing within a dark space. And so it is through electromagnetism that they are able to navigate in a way that optimizes their functionality. All of this stuff needs to function, and there are multiple signals getting sent around in a space at any given time. And so if there is a hormone like estrogen coming around the space of a cell that needs to receive it in order to activate a a domino effect of physiological response within the female body, which is a a necessity at many points of time, right? So the integral membrane proteins are charged in such a way that attracts the charge of the estrogen so that they can come into contact so that the integral membrane protein can change shape, change conformation for the information and parts of estrogen to come into the cell to affect it in into those xyz ways okay so that's just an example of electromagnetism on a cellular level you are electromagnetic on an atomic level on a cellular level on a systems level if if we think about all of the cells compounded and you know we have these different systems because different cells have become specialized in one direction or another because it's more efficient for a super organism like a human to have specialized cell cells and have specialized systems for doing different things instead of a cell doing everything. It's way more efficient to have systems. So not only are you electromagnetic on an atomic level and on a cellular level, but on a systems level, on an organ level even, because this is a space of the compounded electromagnet magnetism of the cells. All of these cells, all of these atoms and their added up their compounded electromagnetism. So not only, oh my gosh, and then this is about, this blew my mind. Okay. So we have the, the compounded electromagnetism of an organ because of the atoms, because of the cells. And then we have the compounded electromagnetism from the system that the organ is within. Now, I interpret at this point of knowing that when these Buddhist monks were visualizing the chakras, they were seeing the electromagnetism of the system. If I look at my body, okay, I have the electromagnetism of the root, or I have the root chakra, a sphere of red. If I take into account all the cells that are in the space, whether they're bone, muscle, or 
for the the specific organs like the vagina the penis like the gonads whatever like all of this stuff is together in a system right and so what if these people without the knowledge that we have now which it's debatable whether it's greater or worse or more or less but what if the chakras are an interpretation a visualization of the electromagnetic <sighs> presence based off the compounded cells atoms organs of that particular system and so then i move up the body and i find that in the nine chakra practice the hara where the large intestine is and the uterus if, if you know i'm i'm a lady okay so i've got a uterus and i've got ovaries where the men you know, still, I'm still looking up your physiology. I'm not sure if your prostate is considered to be in the hara or in the root chakra. More research yet to be done. But all of the energy in this space, this is one system, one system that takes up a certain amount of space within the body. So I have chakra number one and it's electromagnetism, chakra number two and it's electromagnetism. If I move up the body into the upper half of the sacral or the second half of the sacral this is a these are different organs so we have the stomach and the pancreas and the small intestine you know this is a different set of organs with its own compounded electromagnetism based off the cells that are present there the atoms that are present there and then i move up the spine and i go into the solar plexus where the heart or excuse me where the the diaphragm and a lot of the lungs are this is its own system that's a whole sphere of energy that is the electromagnetism of the solar plexus and then i get into the heart and it has its own thing going on too what i'm saying is that these people are freaking brilliant and they through the chakras were perceiving the electromagnetism of these spaces of these systems before modern quantum physics was able to illuminate electromagnetic frequencies. I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. All right. Well, I hope you all got something from this. I enjoy sharing the information. I hope you continue to have a good time and place wherever you are. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up or share it with others. Subscribe to the channel. Feel free to donate to Light Diamond Creative on Cash App or Venmo. Or just send a comment saying, hey, send a comment saying what you think about the episode. I appreciate all interaction, all engagement, and I appreciate that that engagement brings the AI algorithm to send out this video to more people who might need it. All right. Have a good one. Martha with Light Diamond Creative. Peace.